Okay, um, so section 21.4 is about organic halides, alcohols, ethers, and amines, or amines. Um, and um, these are organic molecules that contain atoms other than carbon or hydrogen. So those are called heteroatoms in organic chemistry. Anything other than a carbon or a hydrogen is a heteroatom. And these heteroatoms have uh, a really big impact on the chemical reactions that organic molecules can undergo. Groups of heteroatoms will make up um, different moieties that we call functional groups. So a moiety of atoms or a group of atoms that uh, lend a particular reactive property to an organic molecule is called a functional group. And um, we can start to sort of think of organic molecules as modular, like Lego blocks, where you can add um, a different uh, functional group onto your molecule in different locations to give it different properties. It's uh, what makes organic chemistry, I think, really fun and interesting is like the, the creative possibilities. Um, the fact that uh, uh, organic molecules become a platform or a system to, to build, to design and build your own um, uh, type of reactive properties into the molecule. So uh, anyway, so I like to think of these functional groups as like the interesting Lego pieces, the wheels and the, and the levers and, and the people and different interesting Lego pieces that you can stick on an otherwise bland Lego creation to make it more interesting. Functional groups will be added to alkanes, which are pretty boring, to make them much more interesting. Um, so the first functional group technically are alkanes. So we'll call those alkyl groups. And they're often represented by an R. Oftentimes it's not terribly important how many carbons are in a carbon chain. Um, we just want to uh, sort of represent that whole carbon chain with one quick little letter R. And if you've got more than one alkyl group, then you can use R prime and R double prime to keep them all separate. Um, uh, so those are alkyl groups. The next group are organic halides. And we actually covered them yesterday uh, with our discussion on alkanes, alkenes, and alkynes. Organic halides are just organic molecules where some of the hydrogen spots have been taken up by chlorine, bromine, iodine, or fluorine. So something like uh, uh, dichloromethane um, is an organic halide. Uh, so we talked about how they're generated by reacting an alkane or an alkene or an alkyne with, uh, with chlorine, bromine, iodine, or fluorine. Um, and those are the organic halides or alkyl halides. So the next are alcohols. Go ahead and erase dichloromethane. So alcohols contain the functional group OH. And that oxygen will be bonded to one of the carbons. Um, alcohols will be named with an OL ending. So uh, you've probably heard of ethanol and methanol. Well, ethanol is the alcohol which contains two carbons. Um, and so it's based on the parent name of ethane, but you add an OL to the ending. Uh, methanol is the alcohol which contains just one carbon. Uh, it's based on the parent name of methane, but you change uh, the ending to be OL. Um, and uh, for anything bigger than ethan ethanol, then you're going to have to designate where the oxygen is actually connected to the carbon chain with a number. 
So if I have a molecule that looks like that, and as usual, I'm leaving off the hydrogens just because they're tedious to write. Um, uh, this is small enough. Why don't I put them in there? Okay, so this is a propane that has an OH group on it, so it's propanol, but where is the OH located? On the end there, so this would be one propanol. Um, and I'll draw the other propanol right there, where the oxygen is connected to the middle carbon, this would be two propanol. So the number indicates where the oxygen is connected. Um, so alcohols uh, can undergo reactions with um, reactive metals like sodium and potassium in just the same way that um, uh, water does. So it will produce hydrogen gas um, and, um, and OH minus. Uh, alcohols can also react with each other to produce ethers in what's called a dehydration reaction. So I'm going to go ahead and erase everything and show you a dehydration reaction. Okay, so this is methanol. Plus, and let's do ethanol. These two will react together to produce an ether. Now, an ether will cover in a little bit, so I'll just show you what the product is. We have the carbon, the oxygen and then the two carbons. Uh, and so um, it's these two different alkyl groups are now connected, bridged by an oxygen. And it will also have water as a product. That's why this is called a, a dehydration reaction. Um, and uh, so whatever um, the length is of this alcohol will be one side of the ether and whatever the, the length is of that alcohol will be that side of the ether. So we could actually generalize this reaction to say R OH plus R prime OH can form R O R prime plus water. That is a general form of a dehydration reaction between two alcohols. Okay, so we already kind of introduced ethers. Ethers will have one alkyl group linked to another alkyl group through an oxygen. Um, <clears throat> Ethers uh, will usually be named by their longer alkyl chain, and so um, uh, uh, the last example that I just erased, the longer uh, was an ethanol, right? and so it would end with that parent name of ethanol, and then the shorter alkyl chain would end with an oxy ending. So uh, it's alkyl oxy. Oops. Oh, shoot. I'm really botching this. I'm so sorry. Alkyl oxy alkane. OK, so the ether that we just had up that was made by the dehydration reaction between methanol and ethanol. We'll take the shorter of those alkyl groups and make it an oxy. So that would be 
methoxy, and then the longer alkyl group is just uh, going to be the alkane name. So methoxyethane. Methoxyethane is the name of the ether that I had drawn up there earlier, and I might as well just draw it again. That would be carbon, oxygen, carbon, carbon, filled in with all the hydrogens that it needs. Um, uh, so uh, there's an older convention that would just name the two alkyl groups and end with ether. So this would be ethyl methyl ether. That's honestly what I learned, um, and it's still in common use, and in some ways it's simpler. But it is an old uh, naming uh, uh, standard, and this like methoxyethane, methoxyethane is the newer standard that you probably should put your efforts toward learning. Um, I want to show how alcohols and ethers are uh, structural isomers of each other. Here we have methoxymethane um, and ethanol, and they both have that same molecular formula of C2H6O. And so ethers and alcohols will have the formula of CN H2N plus 2O, um, which is just the formula of an alkane with an oxygen on the end. And so um, those are ethers and alcohols. All right, there's one more functional group that we want to talk about today. And those are amines. Sometimes they're called amines, sometimes they're amines. Um, and amines are just uh, where you have uh, like ammonia, NH3, but you uh, replace one or more of the hydrogens with um, alkyl groups. And so you can have a primary amine, which is NH2R, and we see a primary amine right here. Um, an example would be methylamine. Uh, you can have a secondary amine where you have NHRR prime. In this case, uh, it's dimethylamine given in the figure, but it could be something like ethylmethylamine or propyl butylamine. They don't have to be the same type of alkyl group. And that's called a secondary amine because there are two alkyl groups attached to that nitrogen. Well, or you can have a tertiary amine, N, R, R prime, R double prime, where all of the hydrogens have been replaced by alkyl groups. So that would be an example over here of a tertiary amine. They've got trimethylamine, but again, they don't have to be the same. It could be methyl ethyl propyl amine, or it could be um, uh, you know, butyl pentyl hexylamine, uh, any alkyl groups that uh, replace the hydrogens would become a part of the name in the form of uh, the parent name ending in YLL, and then it ends with amine. So, um, We'll see some of the reactions that amines can undergo actually tomorrow, uh, because amines will be a um, starting material in the formation of other more complex functional groups. So this is it for today.